So as we look uh, at this beginning of thermochemistry or th uh, thermodynamics, uh, we're going to start by looking at endothermic and exothermic reactions and then at this thing called enthalpy. <clears throat> so uh, taking a quick look here in case you've forgotten the problems here at the beginning of this chapter and uh, trying to encourage you to do those neatly and leave some space between problems. Uh, remember, as you're watching this video, if things uh, <coughs> excuse me, go too fast, just feel free to stop, pause, back up, whatever you need to do. So we're going to be talking about energy. And remember, energy is something that has the capacity or the ability to do work. And in the universe, uh, we say that energy is conserved. In other words, um, uh, we'll be using a formula that says the energy that is lost in one part of the universe has to be equal to the energy that is gained in some other part of the universe. It's not lost or destroyed from the entire universe, it simply moves from one place to another. And we'll make good use of this equation. Also, we will learn that energy is a state function. And by that we mean that when we draw an energy diagram of a chemical reaction, um, maybe we start with reactants here, and after the reaction the products have this much energy, uh, we are very interested not in how these chemicals got from point A to point B. What we're interested in is this change in energy that occurs in the reaction. And uh, that is independent of the path, independent of what happens between A and B. We are looking at the change in energy. We're not going to work with force here uh, in this presentation. Remember, heat is energy that's transferred between objects uh, because of a temperature difference. And it, heat always flows from objects that are warmer into uh, objects that are cooler. So, for example, if you go to the football game and you're sitting here um, with your legs hanging over the bleacher. Boy, I did a bad job of drawing that. You're sitting here on the bleacher. Which direction does heat flow? Well, it flows from the part that's warm into the part that's cold. You may feel like cold is seeping into your butt, but no, it's really that heat is leaving your body and warming up that bench. So, for purposes of our study of chemistry, we'll we always be dividing the universe into two parts, the system and the surrounding. Now, the system is the part we will be working with and focusing on, so we'll constantly ask, what is the system in this situation? And everything else, the rest of the universe, is the surrounding. That allows us to say things like this. Exothermic reactions release energy to the surrounding. So the system is where the exothermic reaction is occurring. And endothermic reactions, their systems absorb energy from the surrounding. So we might see something like this. Of course, you all recognize the formula for methane or natural gas. And you're familiar with the combustion of methane to make carbon dioxide and water. You also know that heat is one of the things that is produced. Well, what that means is that heat is leaving the system. Because this is our system, heat is leaving that um, in the process of this reaction. So the energy in the system from here to here from point A to point B, that change in energy is going to be a negative number. 
because the energy in the system drops. Now we're not so concerned about the in this instance we're not dealing with what happens between A and B we're only concerned about this change in energy from A to B. Now if we look at just the opposite kind of reaction in this case as we go from products to reactants the energy um, increases. That's because energy is coming in from outside our system and increasing the internal energy of our system. And so in this particular case the change in energy would be a positive change. So what we've just realized now is that energy Measurements have three parts. A unit, which will always be in joules or kilojoules. A number that tells how many joules or kilojoules we have. And a sign that tells us the direction. So if the change is exothermic, the change in energy of our system will be negative because we'll be losing energy and the um, change in energy will be positive if it's an endothermic reaction because energy is coming in from somewhere outside into our system. Now often our system may be something like well I'm going to draw here a coffee cup calorimeter a styrofoam cup now this styrofoam cup is often filled with water or partially filled with water and we may have some chemicals in here that we are reacting in some way. Now I'm going to draw the chemicals in the bottom of the cup but realize they might be dispersed throughout uh, the water but at any rate the water is part of the surrounding and this chemical is the system so if energy flows from the system um, out into the water, out into the surrounding, we'll find that the water temperature increases. But for our system here, the change in energy will be less than zero. Or another way of saying that is the change in energy is going to be negative. And if we reverse that situation, and have our same coffee cup calorimeter filled with water and a system of some kind of chemical here that's reacting. If energy flows from the surrounding into the water, excuse me, from the surrounding into our system, then the change in energy of our system is going to be positive, delta E will be greater than zero. So keep in mind that heat given off by a fire or by light, if it releases heat, if it releases energy, that's a negative value. And if heat is absorbed, it is a positive value. 